So, Da Vinci Resolve 17 has finally been released. And with it comes a whole host of new effects, techniques, and tools for you to be using. In today's video, we're going to be talking about arguably one of the most powerful tools within DaVinci Resolve, and that's going to be the Magic Mask. So we're going to be going over what it is, how to use it, why you should use it, and also some cool little techniques you can do with it. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is the Magic Mask feature within DaVinci Resolve 17? Essentially, it's a powerful new masking feature found within the color page of DaVinci Resolve and it enables you to use DaVinci Resolve's new neural engine to isolate either the full body of a person or just selected individual elements of a person. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and how it can be used. So if we navigate to the color page here, you can see that we have several new tabs, but the tab we're going to be focusing on is this tab here, which is the magic mask feature. So if we click onto that, you can see we have this whole new tab here with all of these new parameters. So as I said before, so the main use of the magic mask is to isolate and mask out either a whole individual or parts of an individual. So as you can see, we have a little qualifier tools here. We can add a stroke, take away a stroke. We can invert the selection and we can show our mask. So by default, we're going to click on to show mask overlay. And now if I just draw a little stroke over a person, you can see that it's automatically very, very quickly isolated our individual. And this is extremely powerful, absolutely powerful. As you can see at the moment, it's not actually perfect. And that's actually because down here, there's a quality slider and we're on faster instead of better. Now faster will select and highlight an individual much quicker, but it may not be as accurate. Better will isolate the subject, as you can see with a much more refined mask, but it will take longer to apply some of the changes and also tracking may take a little bit longer also. You can also see that we have different modes here. So for example, if we click mode, you can see it says shrink, grow, open and close in. And this essentially enables you to adjust the parameters down here. So if, for example, we go to shrink and I increase the radius, you should be able to see the effect it has on the mask. So if I go to zero, and again, if I shrink the radius, you can see the mask is tapered in. Now this is extremely powerful, extremely powerful. All of these parameters and controls here, for example, blur radius, your, your matte controls for clean black and clean white, all of these controls and parameters can be adjusted before you track the image, but it could also be adjusted after the fact, which is, is super, super powerful, extremely powerful. So what I'm going to do is I think this seems to be pretty good. We also have a smart refine. So if you want DaVinci Resolve to do the whole thing by itself and use this intuition, you can just adjust the slider and see how it affects the mask. Not bad. Okay, so how do you track this? Essentially how you track it is quite similar to how you track things before. You have this window here. And if you click this button here, it will track forwards. You click this icon here, it will track backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to track forwards and I'll get back to you. As you can see, we're actually tracking in real time. And you can see a little blue line here and it shows you the progress of your track and where the track is working. Extremely useful, extremely powerful, very, very, very powerful. And it's fairly quick. It's actually remarkably quick and you can see that the mask is staying in place. Okay, so for now, we're going to leave it here. If we go back. Now, for example, if we were to adjust some of our parameters, so say, for example, we make this whole mask blue. I'm going to toggle my overlay off so I can see it better. And you can see we now made our complete person blue, which is absolutely insane. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's extreme. Why would you want to use this? You can use this for several things. The first and most obvious way to use this is, of course, for refined editing and grading. So say, for example, if we wanted to make her pop a bit more, we could increase the gamma. We can make her slightly brighter. We can change the contrast. We can increase the saturation. If you wanted more refined tools, you can see that it not only says person, but it says features. So let me toggle on my mask overlay. By the way, there's two ways to see the mask overlay. You can either click this mask overlay tool here, or if I click off, I can go to the highlight tool here. And it's kind of like your qualifier. You can see the little marks that way. But I personally like using the new toggle mask overlay. So I'm going to do that. So as I was saying, you can not only mask out a complete person, but also features. So if I right click and delete this stroke, go back to the beginning, you can see here we have a features panel. So if we click onto this, we can see we have a drop down here and you have all of these little parameters that you can adjust. So say for example, face. If I now click onto her face and I draw a little stroke, you can see it's masked out her face and it's done an extremely powerful job. 
Now, technically, you have always been able to do this in the feature before with power windows and tracking. Say, for example, if I go to the power window tab here and I get like a circular mask, I can then go to the tracking menu and then track forwards. Then I can pause it. Then, for example, if I want to adjust my parameters, I can. But as you can see, we have like a huge circle here. Of course, we can go back and we can like change the softness and stuff, but it's not necessarily as accurate. It can be fast. But now, with the new magic mask, all I need to do is go to features, turn my mask over on, go to face, draw a little line, bang. Now, track forwards. And as you can see, just as fast, we're literally tracking and isolating just the face. And by the way, I've got the quality on faster, so not better at the moment. So now, if I go to the offset and I change, for example, the face to like blue, turn my mask over lay off, we can see we've now isolated just that specific feature and it's tracked. So if we wanted to give you more real use scenario, adjust, for example, the colors of the face, we could brighten up a little bit. We can color correct it a bit. You can see that we're doing that. And it's extremely fast and helpful. It's honestly very, very powerful. I can't stress this enough. Okay, so not only can you mask out the face, you can also isolate, for example, the clothes. So if I go down to features, I change this, I go to clothing top, then put the mask overlay back on. You can see if I draw another stroke over the clothes, we've masked the clothes, which is insane. Now, the big problem is if I change the mask overlay to off and I change, for example, the color, you can see it's affecting both the face and the clothes, which is not what we want. So essentially, if you want to isolate different parts of an image, what you would do and what I'd recommend you to do is press Alt S to create a new node. And then just draw a new mask over the area that you want. So I'm going to go back to Magic Mask. I'm going to go to Features, Clothing, change it to Top, draw a line, bang, Mask Overlay, change it to Better. It's going to take slightly longer, but it'll look better. I'm going to refine the mask, Smart Refine. I'm going to do Grow. I'm going to increase the radius. Okay, for now, this will be fine. Now I'm going to press this button here to track forward. You can see we're tracking the mask. It's taking slightly longer since we're using a better quality instead of faster. Okay, that's good enough. Now, if I toggle the mask overlay off, you can see if I adjust the parameters of the top, we've isolated just the top and this is so powerful. This is so, so powerful. Now, if I toggle both of the effects on and off, you can see just how much we've done in such a short amount of time. We've isolated just the top, isolated just the face and we've color corrected the face increase the saturation and brightness of the face and also isolate to the top. Now, as you can see, this is extremely powerful. You can do some really, really creative things with this. This is not the only thing you can do with this. This is actually the least creative thing you can do with this, but the most obvious. Another thing that I found you can do is actually effects like this. So as you can see here, we actually have our person and we have a smoke effect underneath them. And you can see it's literally on their feet. And it's right behind them. This is extremely powerful. This is another creative way that I found you can use this. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this. You can not only do this with, for example, video effects. You can do this with text. You can make text go behind somebody. You can do shapes, logos, animations. You name it, videos. This is very powerful. And it's using the Magic Mask feature in the video result. I'm just going to show you really quickly how I've done this and how you can do it too. Okay, so as you can see, we've dragged our video here. So the first thing you're going to need to do is duplicate the video. So I'm going to hold down Alt and just drag up to duplicate the video. Next, we're gonna to go to the color page. We're gonna to navigate to the Magic Mask tab, which is here. And I'm gonna enable the toggle overlay on. Next, I'm just gonna draw a tiny stroke over our character. And you can see it's already masked them out. However, it's not really done a great job. So I'm gonna change the quality from faster to better and see if that improves it. Now, this is actually quite a complex scene. There isn't much contrast between our subject and the background, but you can see it's actually done a very good job right off the bat. Again, we could refine this mask by using Smart Refine, dragging it back a bit. We could use the modes. We could adjust the radius, the consistency, the blur. But for this tutorial, I'm going to leave it short and we're just going to keep it like this. So once we've selected our person, we've isolated them. Next thing you're going to need to do is track them. So I'm just going to track forward ever so slightly and I'll get back to you when it's done. It's actually fascinating to watch this. You can see it masking our individual gates in the background. This is it's some pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Okay, you can see it's finished and it's given a little tick there to show that it's successfully tracked and marked from the beginning, the clip to the end. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to make this an alpha. So within your nodes panel here, right click and add alpha output. Then you're gonna see a little blue square here. Drag the blue square from your nodes 
to the alpha output and we now have successfully masked our image. If I use the highlight tool to see, turn off mask overlay, you can see that we actually have just our person masked out. Now if I go back to the edit page, now this is exactly what we want. If I disable the bottom layer, you can see that we have our person at the top and at the bottom layer, we have our clean play, if you will. So essentially how this works is you place a text, a video, an animation, you name it in between this layer and it will essentially appear behind them. So, so I've dragged in some smoke effects and I'm just going to press play. It's going to be quite laggy, but as you can see straight away, it's literally behind him. And this is extremely impressive. I'm going to show you the rendered version just so playback is much faster. And just like that, we have the effect. And again, you don't need to do this for just videos. You can do this for text as well. DaVinci Resolve has a whole bunch of new innovative text. Finally, if you want to see what all of the text look like, I have a video link in the description. But I'm just going to grab a just a normal text. So as you can see, we have our text here. I'm going to type in memes. Increase the size. And just like that, you can see it's behind our subject. Here you can see we have another example with Pepe right here. And <laughs> you can see we have another example with Pepe right here and you can see our person, you know, staring into the distance, staring at Pepe. So again, you have extremely creative options that you can do with this. It's the possibilities are truly endless. And I'm extremely happy with the reach result right now. This is the largest update yet. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please share, subscribe, comment, like. If you found this tutorial useful, then let me know in the comments below. The Ring Resolve 17 literally just came out, so there's a whole bunch of new features and techniques. So there's going to be lots of tutorials coming out in the next few days. So subscribe to catch them and not miss out. I'll see you on the next tutorial, guys. Peace.